Hey everybody, welcome to Raising Vibrations. So I want to talk to you about Saturn moving direct. This is going to be happening on the 4th of November uh, 2023. So some exciting things I think are going to come from this uh, planetary phase that Saturn's going to move through. Uh, I was looking at the, the transits and kind of getting a sense of what I can feel what seems to be uh, alive within the collective field at the moment. And what I sense is probably going to be the lessons or the emotional uh, developments that we're going to uh, potentially move through as Saturn begins its uh, second sort of round of moving through the first degrees of Pisces. And uh, when I was looking at it, I noticed that there were a lot of sign signals that were in the collective field that made me feel hopeful uh, in many ways. I, I don't think that there are going to be like miracles and dramatic changes that will play, take place in the world. I think the world is always going to be to a certain degree full of unpredictable um, situations and quite frankly, terrible um, experiences, right? But I think on an individual level, and I think in terms of the emotional well-being of uh, individuals, I think there is a possibility with Saturn moving through Pisces for a tremendous amount of uh, emotional healing to take place and um, a level of empathy or, or compassion to almost in a sense like saturate the emotional fields of people, uh, giving us an opportunity to be less sort of um, rigid in our judgments or rigid in our um, uh, ways that we psychologically act on our fears. You know, when something feels foreign to us or something feels um, difficult or complex or if it scares us, the limbic system tends to, to sort of come into to action and uh, form beliefs that protect you from those experiences, but also those beliefs can be very polarizing, can be very othering, um, and can also, you know, lead to some really intense negative um, expressions of anger and, and, and such. So I think that I'm hopeful, at least, this is me just being sort of personally hopeful, uh, but also noticing possibility and potential in the field with Saturn moving direct. So um, as you know, Saturn has been retrograded from what I could see from uh, the July of this year and um, now that it's going direct in the the previous video that I just did on the summary of the eclipses I talked about uh, Saturn uh, moving direct and at the, doing it this at the same time as Venus and Neptune are in an opposition to each other in the signs of Virgo Pisces and we also have uh, Mars along with the Sun and Mercury and Scorpio but particularly Mars making a direct opposition um, to Uranus, and, and this is kind of going to come into play. So what I'm trying to say here is that as Saturn sort of begins to move forward, uh, the planets that are at creating activations at the same time as the Saturn moving direct is, I think, very important to, to take note of. I also think that it's really significant that uh, we've had these eclipses just take place and then the cycle of Saturn also moving forward. So I think and feel that Saturn's moving forward will speak to where we are looking to emotionally develop and mature around Venus-Neptune opposition themes as well as uh, Mars-Uranus opposition themes as well as the themes of this solar and lunar eclipse portal that we are now present with. Okay. And I began to break it down in the previous video. I do encourage you to watch that one as well. I'll put a link in the description. Um, but here I want to just kind of break down a little bit more in a different direction when it comes to Saturnian processes. Okay. So um, I'm going to break it down into these chapters that I think could be easily digestible. So I'm going to see how well I do this. Okay. So let's start off with really connecting with the essence or the principle or the, the, 
the definition of Saturn, okay? So for this conversation, I'm going to define or categorize or label or interpret the principle of Saturn here, okay? As the way that we as human beings experience definition, right? How we establish boundaries and experience boundaries and how we implement these boundaries or these definitions uh, as a way to hold something together, okay? So let's say, for instance, I have this idea to um, uh, talk about astrology and talk about Pluto, okay? So this idea is very abstract, but it needs a container. So what I'll do is I'll say, okay, well, on the weekend of the 17th of November, um, from Monday to Sunday, there will be a whole entire workshop on Pluto. Okay, now this is not really going to happen. This is just for us to establish this, right? So what I've done is I've gone ahead and established a container for this idea or for this, this, this creativity or for this essence to exist within, right? And I've done this by saying, okay, well, from this date to this date, right? So create a container. And then I've also established a series of structures in place like on Mon on Saturday and Friday there will be uh, a Pluto story on Saturday we work with your charts on Sunday you'll do XYZ right so now there's a form that we can actually emotionally identify with so the Capricorn function or the Saturnian function what it does for us as human beings is, is that we react and respond to and then establish definitions or structures that allows us to, in a sense, exist within. Now, these structures or definitions at some point uh, become senescent, right? They become outdated. They no longer uh, facilitate the current sort of, I don't know, definitions of the world that we exist within. So if you set a, a, an establishment or institution um, in the 1920s, and then you now come up to sort of the 2000s, uh, those rules, regulations, and established structures were birthed out of the current consensus reality at that stage, as well as consciousness, okay? But of course, we know that we kind of grow and evolve over time, which means that we may look at things and say, well, you know, at that point, we thought this was good, but now it, it seems to become irrelevant, or it becomes obsolete, or it has no value in the same way that it did a hundred years ago. So Saturnian processes uh, speak to containers that we create as human beings, borders, definitions, um, you know, yeah. And then we, we sort of, you know, exist within it, right? Something grows and nurtures with inside of that. And um, the natural law of impermanence exists. So as uh, a definition or an institution or a structure ages, um, we need to then recalibrate, reorganize or re-establish uh, the boundaries of definitions uh, that are reflection of the current time versus the time that it was established within. Okay. Now that's an important thing to note because right now Saturn moving through Pisces will bring a strong awareness to where the institutions or structures or definitions or boundaries or rules um, have become senescent, right? So they've become outdated and now becoming obsolete. So you will see in the collective, there will be instances and scenarios and circumstances where the way that we've defined something or categorized something or structured something uh, might seem to not uphold the current uh, energetic uh, attunement or uh, purpose that that institution or structure or definition uh, previously held and that will there, there will be kind of like a the way that it will look like is is that it just it just it becomes it just looks to us as if it's outdated it needs to be changed right and we've been really experiencing this progressively uh, since 2008 right with Pluto transiting Capricorn remember Capricorn and Saturn are from an evolutionary astrology perspective, the same archetype, right? It represents the same form principle. So 
if you look back at the world in 2008 and you look at it today, you can clearly see with your eyes, with your, you know, your, with, you can really see how your own emotional reality has shifted and changed. And we've really redefined a lot of things. So, you know, in, in terms of connecting with this principle of, of Capricorn itself or Saturn, uh, you can see that uh, we as a collective have gone through a tremendous reorganization, restructuring of uh, what would be constituted as uh correct for us or incorrect for us and how this is supportive or not okay so that's that's one segment that um, really kind of captures the essence of the Saturnian processes now the next piece that I want to jump to is the significance of Saturn transiting Pisces and how it correlates to the reconciliation of the experiences that took place for us during 2020 and 2021 and so sort of like the late 2019 early 2000 or 2000s and sort of the early 2021 because that's when Saturn transited Capricorn it also transited uh, along with Pluto and also Jupiter at this time okay so you know, in terms of Saturn moving across Pluto, as well as moving through its own sign, we got a very deep taste of what is comically needed for us as a collective to work through our emotional field. Okay, so this is this is this is a big thing that I'm trying to put across here, right? During 2020, 2021, uh, we had a series of uh, a lot of restrictions. In fact, I actually created a video uh, in early 2020 where we were essentially going into what I would associate as the, 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 the same cave that Luke went into in the Star Wars films, right? Uh, when we enter a cave and it's pitch black, the what we enter with it is what we carry with inside of ourselves, right? The darkness reflects what is within us. And so we went through an intense, uh, deep dark night of the soul during 2020, 2021, right? We all got to see internally the things that we carry in the shadows of our consciousness. And one of the ways, especially if you follow kind of Jungian concepts or if you're into more deeper psychotherapy, uh, ideas about the way that the, the psyche works and the consciousness works, you'll know that there were a tremendous amount of emotional eruptions during that time. And oftentimes it felt as if we were really living in some really intense periods. And I think for a lot of people, this was a time where it felt like, well, would this end, right? Um, we really were confronted with the parts of ourselves that uh, we needed to, to work through. The Capricorn archetype itself has a natural function of repression, okay? If you exist within a container and say your energy or your perspective or your natural attunement to life uh, doesn't want to, is not compatible with that container or that institutional rules or those regulations, um, in order for those rules, regulations and boundaries to be uphold, there needs to be a mechanism of judgment, a mechanism of persecution, and a mechanism of shaming. So if you exist with the outside of that, uh, you need to either accept the fact that you'll be exiled or you will repress your natural instincts and they will become uh, exactly that, right? They're repressed. But at some point in time, they have to be re-emerge, right? And that's what happened when Saturn transited Pluto. The collective experienced a deep emotional purging of that which has been repressed in the deep psychic layers of our emotional fields. And individually we went through this and collectively we went through this. You can almost see it and feel it as a collective regression to all of the deeper uh, layers of our emotional reality that were formed a very long time ago and or also were formed as a more ancestral pattern right? Uh, Capricorn correlates to the process of picking up where the previous generations left off. So 
if you look back to that time, you can see where we were really wrestling with the, the sort of uh, collective and in, uh, individual karmic history of our own emotional layering and, and landscaping, but also how each individual nation and collective nations would, would deal with their own dark nights of the soul. Um, so so that, that's, that period of time is very important to, to begin to see what Saturn through Pisces will reflect for us as we move forward as a, as a collective race. And so here's the connection, right? I'm not, I don't know how to translate it for those of you that are not attuned to astrological um, understandings of how signs, the signs work, but Pisces and Saturn uh, are forming a sextile with each other, right? And these two archetypes, Neptune or, or Saturn or Pi Capricorn and, and Pisces, these two archetypes um, reflect the, the physical reality, which is the Saturnian piece, and then the Neptunian or Pisces piece reflects the process of life merging back to singularity again, right? And so Pisces dissolves everything into you like oneness or unity, whereas Capricorn Saturn itself allows for consciousness to to be imbued into it, and then for consciousness to experience itself as a unique, um, individuated expression. Okay. So these two kind of mechanisms reflect the nature, the way that life works, where you have a physical existence of something and then it decays until eventually it, it sort of returns back to the original essence of, of its beingness for a new cycle to start. So when we reach Piscean processes, the Piscean processes always reflect back to where we in Capricorn processes have experienced our emotional um, reality, right? So we, we go through an emotional event and we need to acknowledge that emotional event in order for us to feel it, right? When we feel it, uh, what happens then is, is that there is a natural kind of process within the brain and a natural process within our cognition that allows us to see empathy in that experience. So a great example that I can give you is, let's say somebody, um, crosses or, or does something to you that really hurt you okay and um, let's say in in this example over here you've been hurt by this process and you reach out and you say hey you know this really hurt me this was something that i'm really sensitive to and this action over here caused me a lot of pain um and so on right you reach out to the person and the person just says that didn't happen that's that's not true right and then later on sort of like, I don't know, five or six years, you're talking to somebody and you talk to them about this event and they say to you, yeah, but you need to have compassion for their experience. You need to see it from their point of view. And what you will notice within yourself is, is that there's a kind of resistance to feeling this natural empathy uh, as well as actually, you know, you, you almost have to convince yourself that, it, that yes, okay, my experience wasn't significant and the, and the other event or the person was. And so I've got to kind of place my sense of um, uh, compassion onto them. But you still have that unresolved uh, issue with inside of yourself here, right? Okay, so let's now create a parallel universe in which the, the role plays like this, right? So something happens to you and a friend, you know, does something it was really important and you reach out and you say you know whatever you say and the person that actually deeply cares about your experience drops into a very capricorn process and says you know what i recognize that um, i didn't know it's something that i can see that has hurt you i'm really sorry uh, is there a way that i can make this up to you right i, I recognize that that um, has caused you some some pain um, and obviously I don't want to cause you pain and I'm, I'm really sorry about that, right? So there's this kind of acknowledgement of the transgression as it were. Like 80% of the time, depending on the nature of the violation itself, but 80% of the time, there is a natural kind of empathy that comes out, which is you then start to say, you know, I, I really appreciate that, or I thank you for, for showing me that process, acknowledging it, um, you know, and there, there's a there's a natural empathy that comes out of it, right? You almost, in a sense, kind of come back to the other person's perspective and allow for that to also be true at the same time. And and there's there's a reconciliation. So truth and then reconciliation are natural sort of um, 
functions of the way that we uh, resolve conflict in 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 our everyday lives, right? And it naturally occurs that way. That's the step process. But the other way of needing to apply empathy without there any being truth, uh, it, it doesn't happen. You can feel that. I'm sure many of you have actually experienced that directly for yourself. So this, this Capricorn acknowledgement of the emotions to feel it, then coming into that allows for a natural change in direction, right? You emotionally grow through the experience. Whereas in the Piscean process, if you disassociate it, or you disconnect from that and you create a, a kind of displaced empathy, you never, the person never actually really gets to see their own emotional sensations and feelings and go through some form of energetic shift. And the other person feels left uh, without any uh, acknowledgement of something that's important for them. The Pisces piece is the compassion, the Saturn piece is the Capricorn. And these two functions work in the way that we actually create um, holistic healing okay in these in this process that's why a lot of people who are trying to create healing from experiences that have been deeply um uh, disturbing to them uh, where they haven't had that natural kind of uh, uh acknowledgement of 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 whatever pain or suffering it's it's caused them um, you can feel that there is there is a displacedness with inside of yourself now Cycling back to Saturn transiting through Pisces, Saturn will come through Pisces and when it was through Capricorn, you could see that there was this emergence of the need for accountability to take place. And so there was also an in intense rigidity around this need to condone and, and create a very strong staff of how dare you kind of thing. Because oftentimes when deep emotions arise from to the surface around experiences that are that are oppressed or experiences that are deeply traumatic and for the collective to work through our own trauma, right? These experiences are not rainbows and, 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 and flowers and so on, right? It, it comes with a, a strong emotional charge and oftentimes that emotional charge can be just completely destructive. There, there is no guarantee that repair takes place. It's, it's possible. But it doesn't necessarily mean that it can take place, especially if there isn't an, any intent to naturally want to create repair. So that's something to keep in mind here. When I said I'm hopeful and optimistic for those that have that capacity, see that potential. But um, this is not something of a guarantee uh, in, in this sense. OK, so coming back to the Saturn transiting through Pisces, the acknowledgement, the rigidity of Capricorn. Now it's coming into the sign, and as I said, there is a possibility and a potential for more sensitive, compassionate, um, reconciliating states of consciousness to to be to be present and aware, and we can be sensitive to um, the injuries that have taken place, right? And so, what I see with Saturn transiting through Pisces now, at least for the first cycle, is that each and every single one of us, right? is traversing this world. To be human is to be intensely, intensely psychologically confronted with reality. And if you sort of spend some time in a kind of Nietzsche state of being and you really question your beliefs and your ideologies and, and your ideals, etc., and you kind of strip away Saturn, the illusions that you might hold about things, reality starts to become very intense, okay? To acknowledge things as they are can be very intense because it brings up a series of complex emotions along with many other things that can be very overwhelming to the emotional nervous system. So to be human, right, is a very intense experience. We are complicated, we are nuanced, there are subtleties going on, there are experiences, situations, and circumstances that for each person you have interacted with, but when you meet somebody from a different point of view, those long trajectories that, that, that you hold within your cellular memory are not available to that person in that moment. So when there are interactions taking place, we're not aware of what, what history each person brings. And this is what I see and, and, and feel that's happened through Pisces can bring to us is that ability to become more lucid and, and allow for the frames of our rigidity and our fears to kind of become a little bit more um, 
uh, softer as we broaden our compassion towards ourselves first before anything else, right? Compassion to ourselves first through the realization of what it means to be human and the intensity of what it means to experience ourselves as a collective race, right? We are very, very close to the edge of things just being changed like that. You just go and look at what's happening in the world right now all over the place, but things can change like that. And so there's always an edge to experiences and circumstances and situations that are right there and we're dealing with it. But in oftentimes it can be so intense for us to deal with that we kind of blank it out, right? And we, we live day to day in our bubbles doing our things. But if we stop to pause and we really, you know, feel into our experience, we, we carry a lot with us. And a lot of the times we don't actually recognize the importance of processing through and acknowledging and feeling and recognizing the nature of the intensity of what it means to be you as a human being, what it means to be you as a human being experiencing your life, and then what it means to be the human beings as a collective trying to reconcile and, and, and figure out a way to exist on this planet um, with the level of uh, insight that, you know, that, that dissolves our more primal um, ways of, of, of acting and responding to, to, to life, right? To, to circumstances and situations. And I think that even in that statement over there, there is a sensitivity to the realization that I also subscribe to the idea that, that we are also that. And um, it's, not, it's not a case where you can um, do these types of prayers every single day to be like, I've got to be a good human being, I've got to be a good human being, and then kind of ascribe to that. But then at some point when something happens and a, and a, a trigger comes along or you get emotionally dysregulated and you notice yourself coming into more of a, a regressive state, that happens, but you can't repress that, right? You can't, you can't disown that part of yourself because it's not good, as it were. We have to come into our shadow. And I think that's what happened for so many people during 2020 and 2021. We haven't lived in the emotional reality of our own senses and feelings and, and, our, and the way that we feel about things as intensely during that time. And that sat and pulled us directly into our emotions there. And for a lot of people, because we haven't dealt with things, flipped out, right? We freaked out. We were like, whoa, what is going on here? I, I can't deal with the level of, of pain or suffering or sadness or trauma or emotional dysregulation or our mental health being disturbed. We didn't because we've been so distracted. And now with Saturn transiting through Pisces, I think we're getting an opportunity to you know, really look at those distractions and ask ourselves, are these distractions and disassociations um, serving us in a healthy way? Is it serving your mental health? Is it serving your ability to to um, continue to keep perpetuating this this disconnect from your from your mental health and emotional health? And that's where I think the potential for this deep emo this 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 Saturn comes from. And I tied in deeply with the fact that um, the lunar eclipse in Taurus is asking us specifically to begin seeking out ways, active ways of addressing a stronger self-care routine, right? A stronger recognition of what it means to allow your emotions to work through you, what it means to become more aware of the challenges that you face, to become more conscious of the struggles that you're dealing with and to not um, isolate yourself, right? A lot of people were isolated during 2020 and, and now this is an opportunity to come into the space and say to yourself, hey, I don't maybe need to just kind of isolate this part of myself. Maybe I can reach out and, and talk about these things and open up more and allow for more of that Piscean healing and healing bomb to come into these experiences of abduction, these experiences of, of pain and suffering that we carry with us, that we, we, we say, oh, you know what, this, this is what life is, right? I think that's what I mean. In fact, I'll, let me just say something here. That statement over here is a prime example of how Saturn through Pisces will erode or make obsolete these perspectives that we hold uh, about ourselves that we should just get on with it, right? That we should just, you know, oh, I should just deal with it. I think that is hurting us now. I think that long time ago, it was a way to cope with reality because we may have not had tools 
available to us or people available to us to be able to work through these deeper layers of emotional complexes that we carry with us. And so to me, that's the message of this, um, this, this kind of transit, or at least that's the message I want to advocate for and, and propagate for is, is that this is a time now, Saturn Uranus, uh, sorry, um, uh, Mars Uranus opposition, Mars creating a kind of need to, to accelerate and bring up to the surface uh, an acknowledgement that it's okay to feel overwhelmed and to say that and to say, look, I am really overwhelmed right now, or this is overwhelming to me. To, to acknowledge that, you know, it is that just because if the rules say, like if the institutions, which are very outdated, and, and I think this is one of the ways that I want to accelerate the, the, the realization of how these institutions are outdated, is that not every single person processes reality the same way. And we're becoming more and more consciously aware of it. I mean, if you just look at the neurodivergent movement, as well as looking at a lot of people who are now speaking up and acknowledging that, you know, their way of interacting with society has always been, oh, I'm ashamed of myself versus no, you shouldn't be ashamed of yourself. You should be um, owning the fact that you're unique and different, right? So owning the fact that, you know, if you want to interact with people and you need to, you need to interact with people who want to speak the truth or you want to sp interact with people that, that don't play games, as an example, don't do drama, you don't have to go like, I'm the weird one asking for this. You go, no, this is who I am. And, 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 and advocate for, for your uniqueness, advocate for the way that you process reality, advocate for the way that you can feel more emotionally cleaned and, and emotionally healthy. Because again, as I said, the, the uh, uh, Capricorn processes, when they become rigid or they, they, they create, um, when the institutional definitions and boundaries no longer work for us, uh, it creates repression. And we carry this with us, right? And, and there are so many people. There are so many people that I talk to, that I interact with, that are struggling so much to recognize that their way or their way or their, their emotional um, reality is insignificant or not important, right? Or I'm ashamed of it. And it's like, this is not okay anymore, right? We've lived during a time where this was the social construct. This was the social way of doing things. You know, and if you're outside of that, if you're weird or different, um, then you should, you know, be banished from it or exiled. And I'm like, no, we're at a point right now where there's a very strong opportunity and potential to be able to start working through our deeper, more emotional, complicated feelings and, and sensations and actually beginning to actually experience that it is okay to, to sometimes not feel up for something, to, to feel down, to experience depression and acknowledge it and say, shit, I'm experiencing depression right now and I need help. Whether it be just reaching out to a friend and trying to find some form of conversation, whether it is reaching out through therapy, whether it is, you know, using astrology as an example to heal yourself. This is the prime time to get into this space right now. So this is what I see the potential exists with um, these, the Saturn moving direct. And what I would say to you is this, wherever Saturn is transiting in your chart, right? That's where you would probably be uniquely sensitive to where this need for healing is taking place. I really believe that there is a fundamental karmic association with the location of Saturn transiting where you are right now. And what you need to grow emotionally within yourself, what you need to mature within yourself. And I think that starts by realizing, uh, taking up space and saying to yourself, I'm going to go into a new direction and start acknowledging that, you know, I might not be doing well, or I need some help here, or I would like to achieve this dream. And now I've got to start believing in myself. And I've got to stop having these internalized messages that shut me down, and cut me down. Um, I need to objectify them. I need to talk to somebody and say, help me break down these belief systems so that you can actually begin to flourish uh, in, a, in a different way. Okay. All right, everybody. Thanks very much for listening to me. I really hope that you got a lot out of this. I'd love to hear your comments um, in for this video and what you thought about it, as well as maybe even taking it one step further and sharing about how you're busy working through your own emotional uh, well-being and health.